seen anybody, anybody seen his cock. Hello everybody and welcome to the Hen House Highlight Show, or as I like to call it, the Highlight Show of the Hen House. So we did a show on Friday, uh, last Friday, and we had five incredible acts. We had James Longthorpe, Rachel Rothenberg, uh, Richard Newen, and uh, Emily Mainfort, and Ian Harvey Stone. And tonight, my idea is to um, just show you uh, some clips from the show. So uh, that's what we're going to do. I hope everybody that's watching uh, would like to join in. You can join in by uh, clicking on the studio link and coming to say hello. You can also... Um, come and see us. Where can you see? Yeah, you can leave comments. You can watch us on YouTube uh, and you can watch us on the Facebook uh, page as well. So, uh, but if anybody does want to come and have a chat with me live, just hit the studio link. It's in the comments. Uh, okay, we've also, um, we've actually got a comment. So let's just see if it's if it makes sense. Uh, hey there. Hey there, Ian Lasky. Is that right? I, I owe you an. Do I owe you an email? I think I do, uh, but that's all good. Uh, right, let us begin then, shall we? Uh, I need to do this. I need to do this. This. this I've, I've got two computers, so I've got to move from one to the other. So our first uh, guest was uh, James Longshore, who lives in uh, Bucharest, and uh, I think that's Romania. And uh, it was quite funny this bit because. <laughs> Uh, James just went straight into his act. Now, normally I have a little chat with people and then um, they do their act. But but James, bless him, had his own ideas. So I have to do this and we'll look at James's first little bit. I put Paris, but it's apparently that's not true. It's James. Hello, James. Hello, everybody. Good evening. Let's have another round of applause for our host you're great the sort of guy i like ah uh, great show here the hen house great show great show happy I, to be I, here happy to be here i'm going to start with my impression of joey tribbiani i hope everybody remembers joey tribbiani from friends i'm going joey from friends yes great uh i'm gonna start with my impression of joey from friends in quarantine so that's what happened. James just went straight into his act. Um, as you can see, uh, I had a bit of a, a technical issue as well. It, it was my own fault because um, what usually happens is I uh, video chat with the uh, with the acts a couple of days beforehand just to make sure the Wi-Fi and the video is working. And James had really bad uh, Wi-Fi on the Tuesday. It was in the afternoon. So we tried it again on the Thursday, and I think I must have just forgotten to tell him that we have a little chat, uh, and then he does his act. So, uh, but it made me laugh. <laughs> let's let's go back to James now and see the rest of his act. Of Joey from Friends in quarantine. Everybody ready? Get ready. Okay. How are you zooming? How was that? How was that? How's everybody zooming tonight? Whew. Got through the first bit. Plus, I'm going first tonight, which is a lot of pressure. You know, um, a lot of comedians are uncomfortable, but I say it's better to be number one than number two. Number two is shit. Um, my job as the first comedian is to, you know, get you guys warmed up, warm me up. I gotta fluff ya, I'm your fluffer. I hope everybody knows what a fluffer is out there. Uh, Porn 101, uh, it's the ladies who get the guys uh, ready to go to set and work hard. Um, so what do I do here in Bucharest, Romania? What's my real job? You guess, I you can't guess. I'm an actor. That's right, living the dream in Rollywood. You know, India's got Bollywood, Romania's got Rollywood. And let me tell you, Rollywood is no Bollywood. <laughs> basically, I'm starring in like low budget sequels to forgotten franchises. Maybe one of you out there remembers Dragonheart. 
uh, the, with the voice talents of Sean Connery. Uh, you're the one person they're still making sequels for. I'm in the new one, which is the uh, fifth one, Dragonheart Vengeance, uh, now on Netflix. And I play the king's right-hand man, um, the guard captain. And I got overdubbed in English, in my own native language. Even though I could have done the bloody accent myself. What do I look like, a wanker? So, uh, before I go, I just wanted to share with you the added bonus about living in Romania. I can live out, realize my lifelong dream of becoming a vampire. Yes, I can say, I want to suck your blood. I mean it for once. It's great, but not because they're immortal. Mm -mm. I already believe I'm immortal, and I'm going to believe that until the day I die. And I think that's my time. If not, you can fill it up with applause. Uh, back to you, Steve. Hey, 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 thank you very much, uh, James. Uh, that was James's set. Well, uh, well an edited uh, version of James's... I didn't say shit. James is set. Um, you can watch the full performances up until Wednesday uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel by going to bit.ly uh, forward slash comedy live, capital C, capital L, um, or just go to YouTube and go to Hen Nights Two Ends, and there you will find us. And the live shows usually stay up till Wednesday. Um, so our second act. Uh, was uh, Rachel uh, Rothenberg from Salt Lake City in Utah. Uh, for me, seriously, absolute privilege to have Rachel in the hen house. Uh, some really good jokes, some silly jokes, some dark jokes, uh, and incredible use of the English language. So, without further ado, uh, please uh, enjoy uh, Rachel uh, Rothenberg. Could I do that? And then, uh, oh, why do I want to do that? There's all of us here now. See, try again, Rachel uh, Rothenberg. Hello. Um, I am Rachel Rothenberg. Um, I am, you know, I'm getting sick of straight men, but it's really difficult to play the weird one in my comedic double act without one. You know, that's a that's a joke for all you comedians out there. It's a joke about straight men. Okay. Um, when a man says, make me a sandwich, I put him between two slices of bread and I eat him. That's a feminist dad joke. A new genre I've invented. Um, that's not fully true, though. When a nice man says, make me a sandwich, I say, okay, sure. But uh, can you open this jar for me? Because I'm not a strong woman, you know? I'm not a strong woman. I used to have to have special accommodations made for me in gym class because I can't do a single push-up without my elbows bending backwards. Um, I've always been a loose woman, you know? I've always, I've always been loose. You know, I have something called Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, which causes my joints to not work right and my arms and legs to just fall out of the sockets. You know, when I was a little kid, my mom used to have to pop my arms back into my shoulder sockets. You know, I've always been a loose woman, you know? And... Um, as a loose woman, I developed into an adult female klutz. And the thing about being an adult female klutz is that um, people, people are always asking me about my visible injuries. You know, I often have visible injuries like weird bruises or weird scratches or, you know, black eyes that I can't explain. Like I one time gave myself a black eye with a bar of soap. Um, you know, it was lodged too firmly on the edge of my bathtub and I was in a reclining position and I was just yanking and yanking on it. And then it popped off and my arms swung around and hit me right in the eye. You know, and uh, I go out, <clears throat> I go out in public with these visible injuries, you know, with these black eyes and things. And people always ask me, who did this to you? What man did this to you? And I'm always like, you sexist piece of shit. You think I couldn't have done this to myself? Clearly you hate women. And besides, I don't hang out with men who beat me, except at things like chess and battles of wit. I'm not a regular woman. I suffer from IBS irritable bowel syndrome, you know? And I find myself going through the same routine every morning with my IBS, you know, I wake up and I'm hurting and I'm inevitably sent into a panic attack by the pain and the whole situation. And then, you know, I have to clog my toilet and unclog my toilet using a pipe snake. And then 
In a moment of sheer body horror, I look down upon myself and I realize that I'm nude because that's how I tend to sleep and how I tend to be at home. And then I have to smoke a bowl and cancel whatever plans I made for the day. And I call this routine the wake and ache and shake and quake and snake and nake and bake and flake, which is a good thing because I turned 29 this year and I've begun to want to spend more time with babies, you know, like fresh babies, like new babies, like I'm wanting to deliver babies. And I realized that what's happening to me is that I'm having a midwife crisis. Um, that also isn't fully true. I feel about babies, in fact, the way that I feel about breakfast, you know, which is to say that, like, in my life, it's, you know, about 11 a.m. And I feel like I just woke up and I'm still nauseous from waking up. But everybody's like, you know, are you hungry? Are you hungry for it yet? Are you hungry? You know, you got to you got to order something soon because apparently they stopped serving breakfast at 1130 because apparently after 1130, the eggs aren't fresh anymore. Jesus Christ. You don't have to swallow eight spiders a year in your sleep, but you will if you're a good little spider slut. True. But in, all, in actuality, I am the type of person who looked upon an electric milk frothing latte whisk in my kitchen and thought about using it as a vibrator. And that's why I don't trust myself with a gun. And those are all of my jokes. Thank you guys so much. Ding, boom. Hey, do you know, I love that. I love it. 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 You don't have to swallow eight spiders a year to be a good little spider. I hate it, I know. I'm not even sure. I don't know if she was she was working on that, but I love that idea and I love that joke. I mean, I, I, trust me, Rachel. If you are just working, it has got legs, right? Probably 64 to be precise. <laughs> cool. Right then, uh, who was next up? A third act, yes, because it was a very international show on uh, Friday. We had um, Jimmy from uh, Bucharest, uh, we had Rachel from Utah, and we now have uh, an international rugby player, Richie New Richie Richard Newham uh, from Wales, who on Friday taught me the Welsh word "die" meant two. So uh, all weekend I've been saying to Piers Morgan. To Piers Morgan, and wondering if the sequel to Die Hard was in fact called Die Hard Die in Wales, uh, and, and that's the end of my jokes. <laughs> so uh, let's have a listen and a look at uh, Richard Noonan. Hello there, hello Hen. Um, just to let you know, uh, recently I. Uh, Got a special uh, shoe polish I did the other day, and it says, um, uh, for surfaces so shiny, you can see a reflection in them. It's worth giving a go, I suppose. Um, what do you think? Uh, uh, can you see yourself? No? Oh, well, it's always good to reflect on things, isn't it? Um, yeah, well, as you can see, I'm uh, I'm particularly bald at the moment, and I actually cover that with my beanie, which has often been the invitation for many a nickname. Uh, Willie Bellend is a popular one. But I cover it up because I'm bald. In fact, I use a special shampoo now called Why Bother? I, as well as bald, I'm also from Wales, and according to a lot of my racist friends, the image comes of a guy who likes to shag sheep, play rugby, and sing choir songs all day long. This is a guy who can't multitask. But speaking of sheep, though, um, I remember I once met a sheep, and before I met my wife, they were some of the most romantic moments of my life. I mean, and I remember some of the films we used to watch together. Um, Sheepless in Seattle, uh, The Lamb Before Time. We actually did watch Silence of the Lambs at one point, but uh, she wouldn't talk about it much. Um, oh, and my personal favourite, The uh, Curious Case of Benjamin Mutton. I'm also a comedian. And I, I believe that the best jokes are a bit like the invisible man having a wank. They just come out of nowhere. And... I do wonder though sometimes if I wasn't a comedian, what would I do? Because it's not many that many jobs around, and it makes me think back to when I used to go to the job centre and some of the stupid questions they'd ask me, like, um, uh, "Would you consider working in a prison?" Oh yeah, my dad works in a prison. What do he do? Twenty-five years. 
else was that? It was something. Oh, yes. Um, I was also considering working uh, in a church. Big mistake that was. I, mean, I went to the vicar and he said, Remember, my son, the Lord is here to save our souls. Okay, which our souls does he want to save first? Um, and speaking of religion, because one of the things I keep hearing about with the um, coronavirus is that it's an act of God. And I don't know, I, I don't really get it because um, I don't see God as like, you know, the ventral type. I see him as someone more comedic and more humorous, someone with a sense of humor. I mean, think about it, think about it. Now that famous picture of the birth of Adam, you know, Adam's pointing up at, at God, God's pointing his finger down at Adam. Just thinking, what was God thinking of when he was posing for that picture? I mean, like, um, if I can get the camera right. Um, Adam, Adam, oh my finger. Uh, why? Do you question the words of the Almighty? No, 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 God, I'll point finger, I'll point finger. Uh, <laughs> I knew you'd fall for that one. <laughs> Look, the big bang. <laughs> And that's actually my uh, set for tonight. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. But we can bong. Uh, Richard Noonan uh, there. If in doubt, leave him with a fart joke. <laughs> uh, what else was I going to say? Oh, yes. Now, uh, this Friday, uh, we have a very, uh, a very, very special uh, hen house uh, coming live from the hen house. We have... Um, from Big Brother Nine, uh, Pussycat Bangkok, uh, we have uh, Penella Harland. Penella Harland, that's right. David Luck, the Fed Sisters, uh, Vignesh Prasad, uh, Valerie Appleson, and Av Singh. Uh, they're all coming to join us in the Hen House this Friday. If anybody wants to leave a comment, you can. If anybody wants to join me in the studio and have a little chat about the acts, uh, more than welcome. The link is in the comments at the top. Uh, if you want to come have a chat, I'll, I'll have a chat with anyone. The, we've got two more acts to go, and then I'm going. Uh, but if you want to have a chat, you will. I don't know how this highlight show was going to work. I just thought I'd play some highlights, and if anybody wanted to chat about them, we could do that as well. So let's see. Oh, yes, our third uh, American uh, from last Friday. Uh, uh, she, this is uh, Emily. She came from Boston, uh, where everyone should know her name. I nearly forgot it. Uh, I love this because it was a mixture of one line as silliness and a little bit of darkness. And I do see a bright future uh, for Emily. Uh, so let's have a look at Emily's stuff now. Oh, I think this is a long uh, introduction, so I might have to talk over this a bit. I gave myself a lot of stuff to pad out just in case, um, but I realized this one was a bit too long. So just get over it. Like America sucks right now. It really does. And we just had the 4th of July here is when you're supposed to like celebrate America. I actually celebrated America by protesting and having sex with a British person. Yeah, the British came. It was good. It was good. I think that like kids in 20 years are going to be more mad at their parents because they weren't an accident, you know? <laughs> it's like, God damn. Yeah, quarantine's been very interesting. Uh, every time I've, like, had to pee, you know, every time I get a little bit sad because, like, holding in the pee was giving me something to do. Yeah. The other day I was outside, you know, walking around and I sneezed and I just like instinctually punched myself in the face. So that's where, where we're at here in Boston. Yeah. Uh, a lot of comedians are always making dick jokes. I tried to write some of my own, but it was too hard. You ever uh, hit your leg when you're in the ocean? And you're just like, oh, Shin. If uh, two people misspell ditto at the exact same time, what do they even say? You know? Yeah. I, um, a little more about me. I, uh, I have a 
strap on, but the gayest thing about me is my that I own my ex girlfriend's ex girlfriend's fish. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, snaps for that. Snaps for, like, being openly bisexual or whatever you are. You know, snaps for that. Um, yeah. I'm just kidding. Snaps are way gayer than scissoring. You know? I was living with a guy. We were living together. And we broke up. And we had a cat and a dog together. And the day that we broke up, I swear to God, this happened. The cat, he knocked a razor onto the floor. And the dog... Swear to God, this happened. She picked it up in her mouth and she brought it to me. And she looks at me and she says, Mom, do you think we could shave the cat? Because Daddy loved to shave pussy and maybe he'll come home. Yeah. Well, it's been really interesting quarantining with a British person. I'm just going to say that in general. Um, I know it sounds like to other people when I bring it up, it just sounds like a tease, you know, because they can't do it. And there's a lot of tea. Uh, but I don't even know what that means. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave you guys with this. Um, so I actually I grew up on a farm in New Hampshire. I know it's really surprising based on my friends on my hands and my ability to turn fingernails into animals. Um, but yeah, I grew up on a farm in New Hampshire and I actually, for my fifth birthday, my dad got me a pony. I know I was so excited. It was so cool. Me and the pony were really close. I went outside every morning to hang out with the pony. Like we were tight until one morning I went out to see the pony and like something was going on with the pony. Like something was different. It, uh, it took me a little while to figure it out that the pony was dead yeah yeah because like it wasn't like when our bunny died you know that was so obvious because the dog bit its head off you know that was so clear <laughs> but uh, I ended up learning two things that day the first thing that I learned is that you actually can beat a dead horse it just it won't respond and the other thing that I learned is that you shouldn't buy a pony on discount yeah, because it's probably like 40 years old and your daughter will end up doing this. So I don't suggest it. But yeah, a couple of months went by and my parents they were like, Emily, we found another horse on discount. Like, do you want us to buy you another pony? And I said, nay. <laughs> hey! Oh, I love that. You know, you can't beat a horse joke. Well, well you can drag him to water or something like that. So uh, that was our fourth comedian. We're moving on to the last uh, comedian, but uh, we do have a guest who I don't uh, know, um, but I didn't know how this would work. So we're going to have a guest in the studio, straight in. No, I don't. Oh, I think it might actually ruin my whole um, setup. But we'll see if I remove this one. And then add this one. There oh. we go. We'll see if that works. Hello, Hi. Ian. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Ian Las Lasky. Right. Hey, that's good. And where are you, Ian? It looks very sun sunny out, right? Oh, <laughs> Riverside, California. It's uh, really close to LA. Hey, cool, California. So somebody from California is ringing Redditch. That's 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 got to be good. <laughs> Uh, who else would do it? So, did you see the show Friday? I yeah, think I, I did. Saw your name popped up. That was a that was nice of you to watch it. Uh, the uh, I love well, I loved all the comics, but uh, Ian Harvey Stone and James Longshore are both really good friends of mine. So, uh, I wanted to support their show. The um, you know uh, Ian Ian and I met like about like right before coronavirus hit, and oh, wow. I saw him in a comedy club and. I said, "Oh, I want to be a comic, but I'm not funny." And he's all, "No, I, we can, we can work that out." And so he, he helped punch up my stuff, and now I do it all the time. So, oh, that's really cool. Yeah, hey, that, that's good. Yeah, because I think I do owe you an email anyway. <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah. I've, 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 but um, hey, that's good. Well, maybe we'll see you on the Hen House in, in, in very soon. I would love to be on the show, and uh, I want to see that light bulb turn on. But to be fair. I don't because I've got the lights on the front. I look at this. Look at man with hair. I don't think it. Um, I don't, oh, it does work. Oh, yeah, it does. It's your, your I thought. I thought the lights actually. It, it, it sort of disappeared in the in the lights. But um, hey, thank you very much for for, for, for coming from California and uh, asking me to turn my light bulb on. Right. <laughs>
<laughs> uh, well, it's good. You can actually introduce Ian, although it's going to be really complicated because I have to add my other self to the screen secretly and then add Ian and then get rid of you. So what you could do, you could introduce Ian and then if I edit it, it will work. Okay. So coming up next is my favorite comic from the UK, Ian Harvey Stone. Thank you very much. I'll see you soon. <laughs> oh, no, it's, that's, that's me. I should have done that way. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. So uh, that's it. The next, the next person to come up here is uh, Ian H Harvey Smith. Now, if I do that and do that, the note, and do that, we're back in the we're back in the room, ladies and gentlemen. So we, here we go again with uh, Ian Harvey Smith. Uh, it's a real privilege to be here, Steve, and I say that as a white male British person. So I guess what I'm really saying is that uh, you know if we were to talk about that in Scrabble terms, that's like a, a triple word score in Scrabble. So I guess what I'm really saying is it's a real white privilege to be here. Um, I just came back from LA and uh, I've been doing lots of comedy in the LA and I think that the LA comedy scene is is much like playing Scrabble because there's lots of uh, white squares um, using black words. Yeah, feel me? So um, because I live in LA, when people find that out, like Americans generally, the first thing they'll do is they'll start talking to me, they'll find out I'm British and then they'll try and turn the conversation around to the royal family. They love talking about the royals. And they're like, well, what do you think about Meghan and Harry leaving and all of this kind of thing? And I always say them, that's the same thing. I always say, like, you know, um, my view of the royal family is that the royal family is like a laundromat because there's a mean old lady in charge who wants to keep the whites separate. But I do find that um, when British people find I live in Los Angeles, they actually ask me other things. And they say, like, uh, do you feel safe there? Isn't it a bit like violent with all the gun crime and stuff like that? And first off, like, you know, I'm from Kent, all right? <laughs> so, like, you know, uh, Kent's a rough place. I don't know if you know Kent, anyone's from Kent at all. You can put in the chat. I'm going to put the chat on. Uh, but um, if you've been to Kent, like, I'm from the Medway Towns, uh, Gillingham, and it's a rough place. So rough that traditionally when a child is born, it gets given a knife to cut its own umbilical cord. Yeah? It's the only town in the UK that's lit by bins on fire. If it were to have its own instagram filter it would be called twilight dumpster fire so like east la yeah it's all right for me you know? <laughs> and i noticed as soon as i got back to the uk that people have stopped social distancing that's the thing now people just really aren't doing it anymore i know you've come to like within one meter of each other and stuff like that and to be fair the same kind of thing has been happening in the us in fact in the us there are some states that didn't really even bother with it in the first place there was a pastor in virginia who maintained his church and kept having these huge congregations of about 2,000 people plus all through the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, and he caught coronavirus and died. So I guess he's keeping six feet away from people now. We do have a lot of knife crime in the UK. The amount of people that are using a salad knife to butter a roll, it's criminal. But statistically, we don't actually have as much knife crime as the United States. But for one shining month, one glorious month of February 2019, London beat New York for fatal stabbings. Now, we never beat you fuckers at anything anymore. I can see there's some Americans watching. Right, we never beat. So on behalf of the UK, I am claiming that one. But they reckon that the dip in fatal knifings in the Big Apple was due to a cold weather front. Can you imagine that? Too cold for a good stabbing. Hey, Louie, the boss says I got to go shank little Tony, but I don't got no gloves. Can I borrow yours? I'm sorry, Jackie. I only got mittens. I, I can't even hold my heater. But when you think about it, like uh, a knife is a, a terribly inconvenient tool for crime. If that guy in Vegas had been logging knives from that hotel balcony window rather than spraying the crowd with bullets, I'm sure he would have tagged a few unfortunate souls. But after a while, people would have been like, well, Let's all just move back a few feet. Clatter. Clatter. Ooh, watch it. Clatter. Mass knifings. Do me a favour. you have to be some kind of circus acrobat, would you? You'd need a level of skill that no white boy loner is ever going to achieve through playing Fortnite 
bowling and masturbating to death metal. It's just never going to happen. Thank you very much. I'll give you back to Steve, everybody. Thank you. Boom! Hey, Axie and Harvey um, Stone. I'm a very now, good... Oh, didn't cut it off in time. Can I go back a bit? Oh, no, I can do that. Uh, I can do that. Oh, right. So... Just getting set up for the last bit. Uh, thank you so much for watching the Highlight Show. I'm going to do this every Monday, I think, uh, it just to show uh, three or four minutes of the axe. Uh, if you've missed the axe, you can go to the YouTube channel uh, and subscribe and watch the whole of the show. It's online until Wednesday. And then um, come and watch us every Friday at 20 past eight. Um, on YouTube and Facebook. So thanks so much if you did stay through this highlight show. I uh, hope to see you on Friday. And we're gonna finish uh, with my favorite moment from last Friday's show. So thanks very much for watching. I will see you uh, on Friday and it's goodbye from the hen house. Um. I'm a very pedantic person, you know, I've made a number of word jokes already. Um, I'm so pedantic that my favorite classic rock band is the whom, you know, but I'm so pedantic that instead of having a safe word for sex, I have a safe paragraph. And the way that that works is, you know, <clears throat> I'll be having sexual relations with my partner. And when things start to go down some avenue that I decide I no longer enjoy, I will cut things off by saying to him, to completion, you know, I henceforth revoke consent for intercourse, outer course, hander course, mouth course, and uphold the revocation of consent for anal course, as well as the continuation of the unfashionable bans on analingus and all accompanying anus related phalangeal acts upon me. Please withdraw yourself from whatever hole or holes you presently inhabit and cease all ejaculatory endeavors at once. And usually that works. <laughs> Big Nash 